This is the future. Evolution. This is the future. Dream Chasers, Kenzie Retro here. It's the last of this uh, 2020, this uh, initial run for 2020 of my top tens, and I'm put, and it's uh, putting together my top ten games of the decade. Oh my goodness me! What an incredible decade we had. We have had some of the most critically acclaimed masterpieces in the world of games. Now, a few things to note. First off, one entry per franchise. They have to have they have to have had an initial release date at any point during 2010 through to 2019. No remasters, remakes, or ports from other systems. And of course, they have to be games that I've played. So, with that in mind, let's not waste any more time. And let's get straight into the list. Number 10, and we're kicking off with 2011. Now, there was a lot to love about 2011, as as with a lot of the... As with a lot of uh, the years in this decade. Pretty much every, dec every film and every year in this decade has had a critically acclaimed masterpiece. Everything from Skyrim to Arkham City to the climax of the Modern Warfare trilogy climax to the Nathan Drake trilogy, Uncharted 3, you had Portal 2, you had Skyward Sword, uh, the latest in the Legend of Zelda series, you had the start of Dark Souls, you had Gears of War 3, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Dead Space 2, Crisis 2, and my pick, Sonic Generations, celebrating 20 years of our of Sega's uh, mascot, and there's a lot to like about this game. Everything from the classic remixes of uh, the Genesis tracks to the uh, classic remix. Uh, I mean, the soundtrack is fantastic. Classic remixes, modern remixes, uh, a classic remix of Escape from the City. That's one of my personal favorites, and then. Uh, I think it's I think it's the modern remix as well of their uh, Crisis City from Sonic 06, but nobody really talks about Sonic 06. But it's good that they actually acknowledged Sonic 06 in uh, in this game. Number nine, and we are heading into twenty seventeen. This is where we saw the debut of the Nintendo Switch. With games like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Origins gave the Assassin's Creed gameplay a massive overhaul. Resident Evil 7 showed that Resident Evil can be scary again. We had independent titles like Cuphead as well. And PlayStation exclusives like Horizon Zero Dawn. Sonic Mania was a fantastic game as well. What Remains of Edith Finch. Very emotional uh, roller coaster in the same, as well as Hellblade Sinua's Sacrifice. South, the South Park Boys back at it again with the Fractured Butthole. And of course, the Battle Royale juggernaut that is Fortnite. But my pick is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now, this follows on from Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor and the Nemesis system is back in full force and it works so well that it actually carries over the nemesis that you have from Shadow of Mordor into Shadow of War and how many 
games do you know that allow you to carry choices over from previous games? Uh, possibly a game that might feature in the list later on. It's number eight now, and we're moving into twenty fourteen. And there was a, and there was another set of masterpieces from this year. We had Dragon Age Inquisition, Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor, which I've already mentioned. Dark Souls Two, Alien Isolation. Uh, Wolfenstein, Forza Horizon 2, uh, Mario Kart 8, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, Donkey Kong Country, Ret Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Shovel Knight, but my pick, South Park, the stick of truth. Now I mentioned, I briefly mentioned the fractured butthole earlier, and <laughs> this is the one that started it all, really. This is this was a licensed game done right. Number seven now and we're moving into 2012 we had assassin's creed 3 the first dishonored game mass effect 3 uh rushed ending aside diablo 3 era 37 aside we had journey borderlands 2 xcom enemy unknown uh what other games we had the first game in the forza horizon series we had hotline miami we had spec ops the line but my pick for 2012 game of the year telltales the walking dead wow and i thought putting together my top 10 films of the decade was tough this is even tougher because there's so many good games Now, it's a point-and-click adventure, episodic, uh, episodic games, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is definitely an experience I would highly recommend you check out at some point, as long as you don't mind me becoming an emotional wreck at the end of episode 5. Number six, and we're heading into 2013 now, and there was a lot, and uh, this was the start of the eighth, this was, this kicked off the eighth generation officially, you had the Tomb Raider reboot, you had The Last of Us, you had Super Mario 3D World, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, uh, indie games like Gone Home, you had Saints Row 4 as well, uh, Pokemon, Coming out strong with X and Y, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, and ah yes, so that so that's when that was released. Yeah, it's a case of ba 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 detained papers, please. And we also had uh, uh, the Wolf Among Us. And uh, Telltale's Walking Dead Season 2. But my pick, Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah. This is another one of those games where what can be said that hasn't already been... What can be said about the game that hasn't already been said? Still a juggernaut online six years later. Most successful entertainment product of all time. Uh... And it is just amazing all round. Next up, we're at the halfway point. It's on. It's uh, twenty sixteen. Oh, we're almost going around twenty uh, We had the Doom reboot. We had Inside from the makers of Limbo. 
we had uh, Falls of Horizon 3, Civilization 6, Dark Souls 3, uh, Pokemon Go, uh, Blizzard's Online Juggernaut, that is Overwatch, Gears of War 4, The Witness, Final Fantasy 15, Battlefield 1, Batman Telltale series, and my pick, Uncharted 4. Such a satisfying end to the Nathan Drake saga. And at time of recording, guys, PlayStation announced that the Nathan Drake collection for Uncharted is going to be is going to be part of the free games lineup for January alongside Goat Simulator. Be prepared for another two tro platinum trophies on my PlayStation profile, folks. Number four now. And we're into 2018. Now, this... This in itself was a great year. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Monster Hunter World, Celeste. We had Detroit Become Human, Tetris Effect. We had the remaster of Shadow of the Colossus. We had Nino Kuni 2. We had A Way Out. Uh, we had Life is Strange 2. What else did we have? We had Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And then... My pick for 2018 Game of the Year, Spider-Man. This wasn't tied down with any restrictions. You just what you just had to play as Spider-Man to stop this devil's breath from affecting the entire city. It is such an amazing game. We haven't had a great Spider-Man game like this since Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 2 in 2004. Just a shame there's no pizza time. Number three. Now we're into the business end. 2019. Now, I went into detail on some of the games that I enjoyed throughout 2019. There was Shakira's, Shakira Shadows Die Twice, Apex Legends, The Out. We had the Outer Worlds. Untitled Goose Game ended up being a surprise hit. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Hold on. Yeah, po yeah Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, Dexit Gate aside. Uh, we had Luigi's Mansion 3. Metro Exodus. Borderlands 3. Super Mario Maker 2. Gears 5. Uh, Tetris 99 ended up being released um, as a battle royale game set in the world of Tetris. Uh, and my pick, oh, also a Plague Tale Innocence as well, also if you guys were paying attention, Kingdom Hearts 3. What more needs to be said that hasn't already been said about how great this game is? People criticised it for being short, but this is an RPG. It is designed for you to sink hours into. I did a platinum run. I got the platinum trophy in my one playthrough. And uh, there we go. Number two. And we're going, we're going from the end of the decade to the start of the decade. With 2010, we had the original Red Dead Redemption. We had... Fallout New Vegas, Call of Duty Black Ops, we had Limbo, Halo Reach, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, Civilization 5, God of War 3, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, what else did we have? My pick for 2010 Game of the Year, Mass Effect 2. Now, the greatest video game climax 
in history. So, not much else needs to be said beyond that. Then you've got... Then you've got the ability to import your save file from the previous um, from the previous game. A great story, great soundtrack. Jack Wall hit it out of the park. Uh, what else was there? I think not not much else needs to be said. So not gonna go any not gonna go any further. There's no honorable mentions because just like my, with my movies of the decade, I, I rattled off a few from each year. So let's go straight into the top ten. Let's get a recap before we get to number one. Number ten, Sonic Generations, number nine, Middle of the Shadow of War, number eight, South Park Stick of Truth, number seven, Telltale's The Walking Dead, number six, Grand Theft Auto V, number five, Uncharted 4, number four, Spider-Man, number three, Kingdom Hearts 3, and number two, Mass Effect 2. So that leaves one year left. And what year is that going to be? If you've been paying attention, you'll know what one it is. And for those who know me well enough, know how much I love this game. This is my Game of the Decade. Twenty fifteen is our final year of the decade. For putting together my top ten games of the decade, we had Bloodborne, Fallout Four, The Witcher. Three, Metal Gear Solid Five, Super Mario Maker. We had Rocket League. We had Undertale, Splatoon, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Life is Strange, uh, Mortal Kombat X. But my pick for twenty fifteen Game of the Year and my Game of the Decade. Ori and the Blind Forest. Now this came out same year as um, this came out same year as Inside Out, a few months beforehand, granted. But this is another one of those examples of something coming along at just the right time when I needed it. It is visually beautiful. The soundtrack is incredible. The story is really emotional. And I've lost count of how many times I've gone through it and beaten the game over and over again. I could... I could get lost in that game for hours and never get tired of it. That's how much I love this game. And I finally managed to get the last achievements for the game. Where I managed to where I managed to one hundred percent the game, beating the game on one life difficulty. There'll be a retro replays playthrough of it on my channel at some point. I just need to try and lighten my workload first before I take on any new projects. So, just in time for the Will of the Wisps coming out as well. I'll make sure I do get a playthrough of Warrior in the Blind Forest before the Will of the Wisps comes out. So, So that's it. That's my that's my initial run of top tens for 2020 out of the way. What was your game of the decade, folks? Sound off in the comments below. And if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a dream chaser like myself, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and make sure that notification bell goes kaboom.
Did somebody say boom? And on that note, that's all, folks. Good night, everybody.